Hi, my name is Cliff Freilich. I'm the Executive Director of Cinema St. Louis, and I am joined by uh, folks associated with the Doc Short Sankofa Back to the Beginning. We're joined both by uh, Director Ben Shali. Ben, would you like to say hi? Sure. Thank you very much, Cliff. Glad to be here. And then Derek Phillips, uh, who is serves as producer on the film. Hi, Cliff, and uh, hi to everyone else who's uh, uh, enjoying this viewing. All right, great. Let's talk first about how, uh, Ben, how did you stumble across um, Sankofa and why did you decide that it would be a film you wanted to make? So, so I started working on a larger project on community gun violence in St. Louis um, earlier this year. And everyone I talked to and I was doing the background, background research said, you really need to find um, Darren Seals at Sankofa. He's somebody you need to talk to. He's really engaged in this and he's you know, working hard at a very grassroots level. And, and it was funny because then when I partnered with Derek, I, so I've been working to try to track down Darren Seals then and like, you know, um, figure out how to get in touch with him and how to, you know, how to get some response where we could start working on a project. And when I partnered up with Derek, turned out he'd already interviewed Darren for a totally different film before and they already had a rapport. So, um, so it was really, you know, it was kind of, um, an easy next step to to get Sankofa involved in the project. Great, and Derek, how did you uh, initially uh, stumble across San Sankofa yourself? How um, how did you hook up initially? Well, uh, Darren has been participating in some of the movements lately, and and I've uh, seen him for a couple of years, and I can't recall when we first started talking, but. Um, He's uh he's pretty visual, so you know at some point he he would say like hey uh can you get some photos here photos there you know and then and that's how we kind of he, he just kind of seemed like out of the blue he just started asking you know can you can you photograph this photograph that because you see me with with the cameras and everything and oh you're sort of fading away just there. There we... yeah okay there we go. Uh, so, uh, talk a little bit about how you uh, managed to, you know, obviously you were showing what Sankofa does by uh, showing an intervention, you know, talking with two kids who had obviously had a, uh, a serious disagreement that could have led to violence in a normal si situation. So, how did you get them w willing to uh, participate? Was that largely Sankofa itself saying, we want you to participate. Just talk a little it, bit it, it, it was, yeah. So I can say um, that was actually when I finally got in touch with Darren. Um, I want to say it was like five o'clock on a like a Wednesday afternoon or something like that, and um, and he was meeting with these guys at six, and so um, he said, "Hey, you should really come come see this." Um, so I ran home as fast as I could. I was like in the park grabbed whatever I could grab and, and drove up there. And I think they, the, the boys were, were open to being part of this because of the fact that he said, hey, this is really important for us to show that you two are making progress and you know, to document sort of the, the experience that they're having. And he actually, as you can see in the film, you know, put the beginning and end of that session on Facebook Live. So it's really about, I think, sort of documenting what's going on to hold them to the piece that they're making. Um, and so for, for me, cause I had to run up there solo on that one. I was on my own, just grabbed what I could in a backpack and ran up there. Um, I found it easier just to record everything on a 360 degree camera. So I just put a camera in the middle of the room, um, recorded the whole proceeding and I just got out of the way. And so that's why you're, what you're seeing actually in that, in those sort of mediation um, shots is a single camera that's recording all the way around it. Um, and the audio on there is, because of that, it's just a single microphone or actually it's sort of like a collection of microphones on that camera picking up the sound. So it's, it's, not, um, it's not as produced as something else, you know, that we might shoot and some of the other stuff that we work on. But I also think um, anything more than that would have been too intrusive for that moment. I felt like that was about them talking through this together in that room. And if, they're, if I'd even been you know, actively operating a camera, I feel like it would have taken away um, from, I guess, sort of their focus and, and it wouldn't have been as authentic a moment. 
Well, I think the rawness and immediacy of it uh, actually helps because that, that is reflective of exactly the process too. I mean, the rawness of the, uh, the feelings and emotions that are at play there as well. I think it's reflected then in the formal choices. So uh, even though it may have been decided for you on some levels, uh, it actually works very nicely. Now, talk a little bit about um, whoever wants to jump in on this, uh, the whole process of mediation. You know, how do, how do the people come to Darren to allow this process to unfold? Does he find out about it? Do family members get in contact with him? What exactly what transpires in order for this process to kick off? Well, yeah. Uh, you you want to go ahead, Ben? No, you go for it. Okay. Um, well, yeah, Darren has been in the streets for a while, so he has a, a reputation of coming out of the streets. So um, people have trusted him to uh, mediate things going on because he he's not afraid of the kids and the kids are, uh, they can find in him and, and he has a large group of men also that works with them. So uh, it's pretty interesting when you see that dynamic of uh, the kids bringing guns to his center and saying they're tired of that life. And you have someone that's uh, not afraid to interact with the kids and sit down with them and, and, and explain to them uh, what in, in terms of what they need to hear, uh, he made it, and he makes it personal, which is uh, was really helpful. It's really helpful to the kids to uh, have somebody that can make it personal, and not just you know a theory or uh, 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 or example, but but make it relative to the kids, and they and they relate to him really well, and they listen to him, and and uh, and, he, and he gets respect from them. Yeah, that was think, evident in just that uh, that interaction that was captured in the film. How do they uh, how do they actually first come to him though? I mean, is it just he hears about something that's taking place on the streets through his network of people who work with him, or do family members who who actually brings the you know the problem to the table? In, in this case, it was the the mother and the grandmother who reached out to him because they knew his reputation, um, and and so they knew that they had an issue that was sort of boiling over and they were looking for help. And, and either people know him by reputation, know him personally, or else know him through another party, you know, and, and he gets referrals. So really he, he doesn't have to do a whole lot of sort of like, I mean, he does do active outreach, but at the same time, a lot of people um, just come to him. And I think just to kind of add on to Derek's point, because he brings his personal experience into this, he has a lot of credibility and, and that's what we're finding is that credibility is a serious issue when you're talking about trying to, you know, to stem um, uh, community violence because not everybody who's working um, on efforts to, to stop violence necessarily uh, is trusted by the people they're trying to reach. And I think that's one of the really great selling points of Sankofa is that Darren and the people he works with all have just have um, a reputation and um, I think just a, a way of communicating that they've earned over decades of, of um, you know, being in the neighborhoods and knowing everybody. Is there a specific uh, geographic area in which uh, Sankofa works or if an issue flares up anywhere in St. Louis, are they open to talking, uh, talking it through or is there a specific area that they concentrate on? Yeah, well, I, well, Ben, I, if I'm not off, I think it's generally in the area where his building is, uh, North City. Uh, I mean, it's it, it would be great if he could be in other areas, but you know, being one person, he can only be in in that one area. Mm -hmm. But 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 one thing that's uh, far-reaching is that he has developed a relationship with the uh, the police chief, the uh, deputy sheriff of St. Louis. And other police, which is the, one of the most difficult things, because uh, the, the relation between the police and citizens in St. Louis has been so fractured that um, many people do not want a relationship with the police. And but at some point, in order to to move forward, it, there has to be uh, relationships established, and he has done that. And hopefully, you know, uh, more people will see that we need that. We need that resource in order to move forward uh, in this uh, society and in the movement. And 
which is really, really difficult. So uh, that's, yeah. that, that is a big dynamic that he has going on. And, and, and with that dynamic, he can now actually, you know, he can make a phone call if a kid needs some help in a certain type of trouble and, and get him that help because of his connections. Yeah, and that very much speaks to the current moment, obviously. Yeah. Yep. And then last, uh, to wrap things up, I'm curious as to whether you know how things ended between the two kids that are featured in the film. Uh, so I, I actually, Derek, you're, you're hearing this for the first time. I was, I was up there yesterday, and um, both of those guys were learning how to tuck point. Uh, so this is two months later, and they were, um, they were up at Sankofa getting training on tuck pointing skills. Um, I, you know, I don't think either of them is out of danger. I think both those guys are very much at risk of falling victim to some kind of violence, if not by the other person, by someone else in their network. So I think that, um, you know, it's a it's a fragile, um, precarious kind of situation. You know, I think I think growing up with the with the challenges that they have, um, but you know, you have to appreciate that at least now, it's they have they have an opportunity to come out of that. And I think the the tricky part is, you know, you can't you can't you can't do all of that for them. So it's just a question of of what they're willing to put in now. Now, is this project? Uh, this will be the last question. Is this project part of a larger film that you're doing? Uh, I assume that maybe you're going to be building a feature out of this. Yeah, that that is correct. Um, that that was the plan all along. In fact, really, this was something that just felt like a. We, we put this together as a sample of, of what we were able to do, and it felt like kind of a self-contained piece, and so we decided to, to float it out there. But yeah, we're like midway through production on what we expect will be a feature. Okay. Well, great. Uh, thanks again to both of you for being willing to have a little chat about uh, the film. Uh, appreciate uh, the work that both of you are doing, and we'll look forward to seeing the feature film, we hope, uh, at some point in the future. Thanks, Thanks, Les. We really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks to everybody. Yeah. Okay, thanks. I'm going to end the recording.